switches to set the impedance uh, oh, okay. of the moving coil oh. form stage. Okay, so when uh, its factory setting is at, is it 1? Uh, we set it at 300 ohms okay. from here. But if you know what the cartridge is going to be connected, mm -hmm. you can adjust it. Or when you're installing it in uh, uh -huh. menu, you preset it and you put it in. Okay. And do you do it through these? Yeah, those dip switches, different combinations. Different combinations is giving and you just, different loads. Exactly. Okay. And then on top of that board sits the digital board. Digital board is this thing. Mm -hmm. It holds all the inputs. Mm -hmm. We have the USB, Bluetooth, streaming, and this is the DAC module. Okay. So the digital input board processes the inputs and it feeds this DAC. Okay. Uh, the modularity here is that we can change the streamer, we can change the USB, we can change the DAC. As I told you, from all the units, mm -hmm. there's never been any upgrade or anything. Okay. So in the new version, we're just putting everything on the board. And okay. Because having it modular costs at least 30% more than having it on one board. Mm -hmm. The functionality is such that you have this cable, this ribbon cable, and this power supply it's totally separate from the tube power supply. Mm -hmm. This is to feed the duct and the phone board. Okay. If you order it without the duct and the phone, essentially you can take out one of the power supplies. Okay. Again, we don't do that because people would not be able to mount it. Mount afterwards. it afterwards if they were to ask for the board. So okay. again, the modularity ended okay. up being a stupid decision. Okay. Uh, the power supply is with two chokes. Mm -hmm. And the uh, transformer, here you have the board with all the regulators and things. Mm -hmm. The capacitors inside are very long life, they're 10,000 hours guaranteed at 105 degrees. So okay. uh, essentially then you should last for 20 years easy. Okay. And that's the thing. Now, what's going to be new in the new? Uh, this board, the digital board, will become one board, mm -hmm. and the bottom board will also become one board where the phono stage is actually integrated on it. Okay. So when you get the menu, you would have the phono stage, volume control, and all this, mm -hmm. and you can only add as an option the digital. Understood. And that's it. Okay. Uh, ribbon cable will remain the same, so that we have some compatibility, and we're doing the uh, layout on the back to be identical, so that you can fit it mm -hmm. to the existing units. Okay. In the new version, we would optimize also the power supply with some higher voltages and things to get better signal to noise. Okay. But it will be compatible with the old ones. Okay. The RS uses exactly the same set of input boards, mm -hmm. just the power amps are solid state. Okay. That's the only difference between the two units. Here okay. we have those 50 watts channel yep. push pull tubes. In uh, the RS is solid state. Okay. This one is fully different. Each one of those tubes is actually two tubes. So mm -hmm. the signal goes in. Mm -hmm. You have a first differential stage, which is DC coupled to the second differential stage, mm -hmm. which uses uh, MOSFET uh, buffers mm -hmm. to drive the grids of the output tubes. Okay, and these are the GU50s? Yeah. The GU50s are in those sockets, mm -hmm. so that they are vibration proof. Okay. They put them in those sockets because they are part of the MIG communication system. Mm -hmm. And in the airplanes, everything vibrates so that the tubes don't fall out of the sockets. Okay. They're very vibration resistant, very robust. You can overload them. Okay. They never go. And they're cheap. They're like $10, $15 a piece. And you can and find them everywhere. And this is the tube that you can basically tube roll. This one, it's an ECC88. Mm -hmm. The better tube you find, uh, the better the amplifier will sound. And this tube? Uh, this is a 6 and 6 mm -hmm. uh, Russian. Mm -hmm. It's a super good tube. And the good th thing is that it's manufactured in only two places in Russia. So uh, spec are quite close. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can always, uh, oh. when you replace it, it's always similar to tube. It's not like the tube rolling where you can have very wide variations. This is why there is no adjustment to the board apart from when we set it up initially. Mm -hmm. When we set it up initially, we adjust the bias of the output tubes and the DC offsets. Then you can swap the tubes and it auto adjusts. Okay. Actually, what the, we adjust here is the offset of the servo amplifiers that uh, mm -hmm. control the biasing. So no user adjustments uh, when swapping the tubes. Understood. Those tubes in normal use should be replaced uh, every year. Mm -hmm. 
at least every two years and at least probably every five years. Okay. Everything depends on the quality of the tubes. We, if you put in Chinese tubes, better roll them every year. Mm -hmm. If you get the uh, Telefunken, yeah. you can keep it for five years. This is the power amp of the RS. Okay. So essentially the same cable is going here, mm -hmm. and you have the output, you have the power transformer coming in. Mm -hmm. In the RS, uh, each uh, of the power amps has its own power transformer, so they're dual mono, completely separate. Okay. No ground loops, no nothing that can go wrong. Okay. In there. Perfect. And the display system, the CPU control, uh, and, and everything is identical with this ribbon cable. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can... That's fine. No, we don't have to switch it on. 